everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here for episode 4 along with Ethan of Discussing Discussions. And we're going to start off by jumping right into the Q&A segment. Because we do have some Q&A questions. And the first one comes from Action Trooper 27 Gaming. And Ethan's going to read his question because he has it pulled up. Alright, so... Action Trooper 27, thank you for um, your feedback. And um, So here's your question. Um, you asked, what direction do you think you are going as a content creator? Do you think you are moving toward being a gaming um, content creator? So, um, yeah, yeah. That's like if we're going towards gaming on this channel. Yeah, so this channel that you're going to be watching this on is obviously Miles Bricks. It's been most, it's a, this channel's been known for its Lego builds that I post on here more so than anything. Most recently, I've been posting some gaming videos, um, and that's, I can see why Action Trooper would start to think that, because obviously, um, my last four or five videos have been gaming, and maybe one of them have been Legos. So I completely understand where he would get this idea from. But I will say I'm, I'm in the development of making a channel for gaming. And I'm planning on having the first video ready this Friday for that channel. So um, I can't guarantee it. The video is taking longer to produce than I thought it would. So I'm a little concerned I'm not going to have it ready by Friday. But anyhow, I do picture myself moving towards a gaming creator because obviously that's something that I want to do, but I also am planning on keeping my Lego creator. That's why I'm moving my gaming content to a brand new channel where hopefully I'll be able to show off my gaming content on there. That way I'll be able to sp show my Legos and my gaming in two separate channels. So yes, I do see myself going towards Legos, or t towards gaming rather. I see myself moving as towards being a gaming creator, but at the same time I'm definitely going to be sticking with Legos at least for now. But don't get any worries, guys. My Lego content is not going anywhere. So, yeah. All right. And um, also remember, um, three more subscribers away from the Fortnite party. We will be playing creative together. You guys get to pick um, whatever you want to play. We could do box fight. We could do zone wars. We could just play regular creative together. And remember, we will try and keep it um, as fair as possible so everyone gets the same amount of time together and remember you have to be subscribed to be able to play um we can't really like scope everyone out it's kind of hard to do that so please be honest with it so everyone yeah just Yep. You have to subscribe to play. Yep. So once we once we do hit that fifty subscriber mark and we'll we'll make an announcement video, we'll probably have a certain time span that will last for about two hours, maybe maybe two one hour t scheduled times that you guys will be able to join in and play with us. We'll just be playing creative and we'll have our mics on and you guys will be able to, we'll most likely be streaming it and you guys will be able to comment in the live chat what you guys want us to do and i'm honestly pretty excited for it so let's get 50 subscribers so yeah and um here miles i actually have a question for you now that we're in the question a yeah um so we do we do have a question um, prepared that we're going to ask each other but first um um do you think we're ever going to become we're going to do discussing discussions live because i feel like that would be um, better because we'll have live questions we'll be able to um have like our reaction to the question right on the spot right when we're like reading it yeah so guys if you guys didn't know when discussing discussions was um originally being developed um it was actually made to be um a live stream once a week is originally what it was developed to be but as you guys may or may not know, you have to have a thousand subscribers to stream um, on anything other than PlayStation and computer. And I don't have a computer streaming system, and it wouldn't really make sense to stream it on my PlayStation. Because, so yeah, so pretty much um, discussing discussions, um, because of that, had to be a pre-recorded session and then posted later on. Um, which is actually what happened, and we in the future, if this channel ever does get a thousand subscribers, um, we'll definitely. And this series is still going strong. Um, we'd love to stream it, but for now, we can't really do that. So that's the answer to yeah, that question. Yeah, but like discuss some discussions. Um, in my eyes, it's a way for us to communicate with the fans. To be, that's like our own little. Um, talking sessions since we're having the social distancing we can only like really call each other so yeah it's kind of just a way to hang out with you guys and um you guys have the freedom to ask us any question you want to 
So that's the only reason why um, we had the idea of live streaming. So then we could do all the, we could talk to each other and do stuff like that on live chat. So yeah. Yeah, hopefully in the future it can be made into a live stream format. But for now, um, we're getting views, you know, you guys are liking. It, you, it's been proven that you guys um, like this format as well. So I don't feel like we're in, really in any rush to convert it to live stream just because you guys don't really seem to mind that it's not a stream. So, yeah, let's get on to the final question. All right, so um, the final question that me and you were talking about um, just now was because since we didn't have, um, we're only getting like one or two questions a week, um, we're, we're then thinking about asking just each other some questions. Um, what was your favorite Fortnite season? I, and now I know you haven't been, you haven't played that much. Yeah. So, um, I've played several seasons. Guys, if you didn't so. know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I would say I'm new to Fortnite, but I've had, I've played it for maybe a year or so. I'm. I haven't, I'm not an OG player by any means, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'd say I'm experienced with the game, but I'm not, like, experienced, I'm pretty sure, I, I'd hardly played in the old map at all, but I actually started playing Fortnite in Season 9, which everyone's always telling me, oh, you should have started in Season 8 because of the free battle pass and everything, but, yeah, so, uh, I actually started playing in Season 9, so I only have Season 9, 10, um, chapter two in the chat in all of chapter two I've been playing. So pretty much, if I had to say one of the seasons was my favorite, I would have to say I really like season nine. I would the that was the first season I played, and I instantly got hooked on the game. Um, and yeah, um, if I had to say my second favorite out of the four that I've been lucky enough to play on. Um, I'd say the season that we're in is probably my second favorite, just because I like the idea of the spy theme and stuff. But Chapter 2, Season 1, can't say I enjoyed it that, that much. It was definitely a lot. It wasn't, it was kind of a below average season. In Season 10, that was, that was okay. Ethan? Okay, so I've been playing since, like, mid-Season 7, so I would consider myself, like, like um, half OG-ish. But, um... So, um, season seven was um wasn't my favorite. The planes kind of ruined it. It was pre it was pretty fun because that was when I was first experiencing the game. That's when I didn't care about getting all these wins, get V bucks, scans, and stuff. That's when I was just having fun with the game. Uh, not that I'm not having fun um, these days. It's just um, I'm more serious about Fortnite now. I'm like I'm trying to get wins all the time. I'm um kind of gambling a little bit with my skins, like um taking a risk like should i buy this skin because i don't know if there's going to be more good ones but so anyways my my favorite seasons was um i have two actually see one of them was season nine so like um like yours miles um, yeah because that was um when they did 14 days of summer which was one of my favorite things about fortnite was the 14 days of summer like it was kind of like a event thing where like there was challenges um, the deep end emote is pretty good. I still use it this day, to this day. Um, also, um, I'm pretty sure that was Fortnite's birthday around that time, so that was pretty fun. Yeah. And then, also, I'm pretty sure that's when the World Cup was. One of them. Yeah. So, Season 9, I honestly, I don't really have much reasoning other than it was just so much more enjoyable. You really experienced what you play Fortnite for. I mean, Fortnite is... I. I I always thought of Fortnite when I first got it as a game, you know, it didn't really matter if you won, you were having fun, yeah. you were having fun even if you got last place in the game, because Fortnite, you know, back, there's a time, you know, in Fortnite, it was super fun, you know, they had all sorts of fun grenades, and you could literally just have fun, and not care if you didn't win. Now you have all these sweats playing Fortnite that have to win, and they literally are just going crazy. Yeah, the reason Fortnite's, like, kind of declining down the gaming charts is because it's filled with sweats. Um, it's not, like, both Fortnite was great. They came out with, they had weekly updates. There yep. was a bunch of events. But, um, like, ever since season, um, the end of Chapter 10, which um, by far was my favorite, um, the, um, uh, the end event was, by, uh, like, it, it, was pretty, it was the best event I've ever seen. It was so cool to watch. But, um... But now, like, there's monthly updates where it's just every month. There's been, last season, there was not, no events. I'm pretty sure um, that was when the Star Wars event happened where which was, was nothing left. Yeah, it was practically advertisement. Which was pretty bad. It was, 
The only good part that came out of it was the new um, Star Wars weapons, which um, kind of got old um, super quick back then. And still, like, I'm not a big fan of lightsabers right now. They're super annoying. They're like a, they're kind of like a nerfed Infinity Blade, which also not my favorite. Yeah, I, w- I would agree with that. Um, so, yeah, guys, also, another I think that I was kind of thinking about is if you guys want us to, like, review the Fortnite patch updates every month, um, I'd actually think that'd be kind of fun. But, you know, this, especially these last two seasons, the patch updates have been kind of boring. Not going to yeah, lie. They're not telling us what um, what happens. I'm, I love the idea of the updates are now happening at 2 o'clock in the morning. So, like, um, players like me who just wake up and just want to play the game, we don't have to wait for an update. Yeah, I love that too. Ex- yeah. But the thing is, they're not telling you what the patch updates are. It's, they're just updating the game. Yeah. They're just ranking. So, they do tell you um, that day if there's going to be downtime or not, but still, they Fortnite was so much better back in the first chapter one yeah so pretty much the only patch updates that we've received that i would consider good and worth the update is the kingsman and the crash pads that made for a lot of memes and i know a lot of youtubers the big youtubers that stream fortnite all the time i know they really appreciated that patch update because recently it's been kind of rare that we get those fun interesting things i know a lot of people are doing funny memes with the crash pads where they're launching people out of this final storm and stuff and that's the that's what you're playing Fortnite for is that those fun things like that. The, yeah, they're just the fun. Fortnite's just about having fun and expressing yourself on video games. Yeah, and the one other update, um, I I'd say that definitely people enjoyed and were happy about was when the yacht was turned into Deadpool themed. That's yeah. probably the other patch update. Um, that was also the same week that the Deadpool skin was released, which I know everyone went crazy for. Um, so yeah, I think we should move on to the next segment. And also, um, I, um, I was I was thinking maybe if we get a certain amount of views, we should do Party Royale for a vid, like a live stream or something. Yeah. Because me and you, we play Party Royale. We had a lot of fun. That's one of the things that makes Fortnite good is they have those small little things that make the game so much more enjoyable. It gives you more freedom. And yeah, stuff. guys, comment down below if you want us to live stream some pa- Party Royale. Now, obviously, if we did this, we'd be extremely late in the game. A lot of YouTubers have already streamed it, but... This would mostly be for fun if you guys are interested in it. So, yeah, let's get on to segment number two. All right. Um, the next segment is um, news about us. So, like, what new stuff that we've been doing on the channel, new stuff we just do in general to, like, keep us from going insane on during this um, COVID-19 um, house arrest thing, which is driving me crazy right now. Yeah, so I'm sure, guys, obviously, I'm not sure about Ethan, but you guys could obviously, me specifically, I'm sure you guys watching at home could kind of predict what I do, judging by my content. You guys could probably predict that I like to build Legos in my free time as well as play Fortnite, and you'd be pretty much correct if you said that because that's the exact things that I do on my channel, and those are the things that I enjoy, so I do it on my channel. And, uh, yeah, so like yeah, I we play Fortnite together a lot. I will, and I say I, when I mean a lot, I mean a lot. Like we play like three hours at a time. And also, you guys should probably remember Mason from last time. Um, we've been playing squads and creative together. We we have a blast playing um Fortnite together. So if you guys ever want to see any of that on. Fortnite Friday, which I do believe is going to be on your new channel, right? Yep. Um, so, oh yeah, that's another thing I was going to talk about. So, my new channel, um, it's, it's just, right now, it's called Miles. It's literally just called Miles. Um, I don't really have an official name decided. Um, it's, it's going to be gaming content, but I'd like to post some, like, YouTube videos like that. Just some, like, some fun YouTube videos. Um, that kind of branch out outside of the box of what you're used to seeing out of me. Like, I, I've, me and my siblings have thought, thought of some fun outdoor videos that we'd like to film someday. Um, and if we've, and when I'm eventually ready to show my face on YouTube, those, we're going to be doing some of those kind of fun videos. Um, yeah, so... That's what that future channel is going to be. For now, it's going to be gaming, and I'm not going to reveal what the video is, but I have a feeling you guys are really going to like it. Um, I will say the game for our first episode on that channel is going to be Minecraft, 
But there, if you guys are mostly wanting Fortnite, don't worry. There's going to be plenty of Fortnite. But I think that Minecraft videos are, are something that I also enjoy making. So I'm going to be posting some Minecraft videos as well. Um, it's probably going to be like 50-50 between Fortnite and Minecraft. But yeah. Alright, one more thing about um, your new channel. Um, how about this? Um, fans in the comments, type in what you want the name to be. We'll pick the funniest one that we think is the best for that relates that also relates to his channel but also is like kind of a joke ish so <laughs> if, if you agree with that miles and we'll do that like say they just type it in whatever they want the name to be and we'll just vote on the best one that we see um yeah i mean this channel's obviously pretty small so i'm i if we did do if we do when i've ever done voting things we've maybe gotten at max 10 votes for something so obviously for something as small as this just randomly put out in the middle of a video i'm not going to expect very many votes and i'm not going to hold my word for it but if, I, if there's a name i like i'll definitely consider it yeah remember also appropriateness Yep, can, um, my videos are meant to be, I'm not going to say kid-friendly, I'm going to say family-friendly, because um, I don't want YouTube telling me, oh, your videos are made for kids. Um, I don't consider my videos made for kids, I consider them family-friendly. Basically, all, basically, all that means is no swearing, that means I might play video games that aren't kid-friendly, but no swearing. That's pretty much my only rule. Yeah, so, yeah, we're just like, um... Several other cha gaming channel um, channels are like that. No swearing, no inappropriateness, jokes. So, yeah, it's more of a fr family friendly thing. Yeah. So let's move on to the. Would that be third segment? Yeah. Um. What was our favorite Fortnite crossover? Okay. So there's been a lot of um Fortnite crossovers. Some bigger than others. Um. You'll notice there's like it it which is a horror movie i'm I've, i haven't watched them um and they're probably not something that i don't know they're r-rated i'm pretty sure so i'm not going to talk about the movies or anything but um there was a super small crossover there and then there's huge crossovers like dc where they put gotham city on the map um yeah. which was huge yeah. so um i'm not i'm still kind of considering ethan do you have your favorite crossover in mind um I was the Avengers Endgame was so fun. I want them to bring it back so bad. That was um, one of the best things ever. It brings back memory. Like it, just talk about it makes me think of because when it first came out, um, me and Mason were gonna go watch Avengers Endgame, so we did like a little um, we're, we're he stayed at my house because he didn't have Fortnite at the time, so he stayed at my house um for two nights I believe. And all we did the whole time was just we played um, Avengers Endgame the whole time. Um, but I also liked the Batman. Yeah. I picked up, I picked up um, the skin pack, which was, I believe was $20, which I kind of regret. I don't ever use the skins that much. I use the back wings every once in a while, but the skins weren't the best. So Yeah. yeah. So uh, which one is your favorite between Gotham and Avengers Endgame? Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Far. It was so fun. Yep, so guys, um, I'm definitely going with Avengers Endgame as well. I mean, I'm sure we can all agree that the Thanos mode where you had to catch the Infinity Stones was absolutely insane. Um, I'm, I know I loved it, even though I I think I, I only played it once and it was at my cousin's house because I didn't have Fortnite at the time, like I said. So, yeah, um, I, I really, really want them to bring the skins back. I really, yeah. really do. Because, guys, if, I don't know if you guys have seen the Star-Lord skin, but it looks insane. I mean, I feel like Fortnite could bring it back if they want to, and I'm sure a lot of people would, since Fortnite's um, amount of players is bigger than ever, um, I'm sure Fortnite would get plenty of people purchasing those skins. Um, I know I, for one, would definitely get the Star-Lord skin because it looks amazing. And if they can bring back the Star Wars skins, why can't they bring back the Avengers skins? Yeah. So yeah. Um, the last um segment we have, um, which um we kind of just threw out there because we were running out of ideas. Um, in the last episode, we were talked about the new Ninjago Legacy sets. I think um that came out. No, it was the new season sets. Um, and you said that you saw them and stuff. So I'm just 
I was just curious on like what your reaction was for them and what they what those sets were. So the sets, like Mason, um, from the previous episode mentioned, they are it's they're basically a ton of pieces to a board game and. Essentially, like all the Ninjago sets, they want you to collect all the sets for money so that they can get money. So they made a, so the Ninjago team decided to make a video game, which essentially what it did was it was simply a board game and you had to collect all the sets to make this massive board game. So obviously, like all, all Legos, the, the sets aren't cheap. I mean, they were like I don't know, there were like four different sets they wanted you to collect for the board game, or five, sorry, five different sets that they wanted you to collect for the board game. One of them was $20, one of them was 40 another one was 50 and then the other, the big one was $100. So if you're going to spend, I don't know, 200 something dollars to cr finish a board game, then yeah, um, go at it. So I don't think the sets, all, of, not very many of them were that impressive because, they want like they like I said they wanted you to combine the sets, to, so like they look r amazing combined. I've seen the picture, the the whole it's like an it's like a massive island, of a board game. It doesn't it looks insane. I'm not gonna lie. When the, when you have all the sets put together, but when the sets aren't put together, you know it's just you know you got some random board game pieces in a set. Now the big hundred dollar set I think that stands on its own just fine. But the other ones, not so much. So, yeah. And this also goes back to um, the theory thing that I had about, like, how Bionicle started just throwing random sets out there when Bionicle was, like, the huge thing that LEGO was, like, um, mass-producing. That was, like, all they had. And then, like, they started going out of business, and then Ninjago came in. But, yeah. Like, Bionicle, they didn't, um, they started running out of good sets. Which I feel like, by your reaction that you just said, I haven't seen the new ones, but by your reaction, um, I'm guessing the same thing is going to happen for Ninjago. Well, I'm I'm not going to say I'm not going to say the sets were bad because, like I said, they looked insane when they were put together. So I'm not going to say yeah. there was. So obviously, like I said, the hundred dollar set. Um, I don't think I'm gonna pick it up just because of how much money it is, but I loved it. I mean, it looked insane. It was like a massive Ninjago castle, which obviously is nothing new to Ninjago castles and what whatnot. But there's just something different about it that looked different. Maybe it's because it was in the format to fit like in the middle of a board game. But you know, it looked good from all sides, which is something we don't see from Lego sets. That's because it had to fit in the middle of this board game. So yeah. it looked good from all sides. That way it could comply with the video game, which is something, or not the video game, the board game, which I think is awesome. Um, and there's another set that I'm, it was 50, it was a $50 one and I'm going to pick it up. Um, not because of the video game, but for the main build that it comes with, it's, um, the skull sorcerer's dragon and the dragon's insane, and the build, even though it's part of the board game, it easily stands on its own. So, yeah. great build. Um, so, I think the Ninjago team, I hope it. I hope the season itself is good, because season 11, if you guys don't remember from the last episode, everyone loves season 11, or season 12, not season 11. Not everyone loves season 11. That's very controversial. Season 12 is the one that everyone loves. So, yeah. Um, that's pretty much it for that segment. But yeah, for like, um, it just in my mind, I feel like the seasons have been progressively going downwards of like how good and thought out. Like the Skybound one was super just, um, it was just strange. It didn't fit with Ninjago, like all these genies and weird stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't like the Ninjago chemistry that I feel like all the other seasons had where like the story was good. You could um, feel sympathy with what happened to the characters, but in the new one they just made the, all the characters look super selfish with their wishes and stuff so yeah it just made the se it just made the season just le that less enjoyable yeah maybe we could talk about this the decline in ninjago in the next episode if you want us to but you know i would say season one through season five were the ones yeah. that really were hardcore ninjago like um, if you, like, I don't know, I can understand why people would say Ninjago's not that good if they started watching in 2017 when the Ninjago movie came out. Um, cause obviously they redesigned the ninja, which, I mean, I've accepted at this point, cause that was like four seasons ago. But, I didn't, I don't, I still, to this day, I like the original designs more than the yeah. new ones. Um, 
and I like the voice actors for the for the original more than in the new ones, um, because it just honestly, specifically in season, um, eleven in ten, well season ten never mind season eleven, um I just feel like this was so guys if you didn't know in season eleven Warner Bros or not Warner Bros I can't remember what brand it is that did Ninjago's animation, um. They switched the brand, so now Ninjago takes a more anime approach to their designs, if you, which I do not like. So you guys will notice sometimes, like when I mean I know some people support the anime, so you guys will notice that in the most recent Ninjago seasons, some of the episodes have been like completely anime style, like the ninjas aren't Legos, they're anime. Some of the just some of the episodes, like one or two from the last couple seasons, which I am not a fan of. You know, I I honestly this happens to every TV show, but I just feel like it's not Ninjago that I'm that I that like it just doesn't seem like the Ninjago that I'm used to seeing. Yeah. Yeah. I also feel like Ninjago. Um, this may be just because I'm getting older, but I feel like Ninjago is just getting a little bit more childish. Yeah. Which um that that might come just because obviously I started watching the series when I was a little kid. Now I'm a teenager. That might that might definitely affect that, but I feel like just in general, they've been taking a kid approach because they're trying to draw in kids to watch it. Yeah. So, like, um, season the seasons like um, the Sons of Garbodon and Hunted, those were great seasons. They made it so like it was still it was super like a it was like more of a violent approach, but still a child friendly ish thing, which um I pr- liked a lot. It was. Super entertaining to watch, like Garmadon destroying the city. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I'm like, that's like the kind of stuff that I watch just normally. Like superhero movies are like that, where like they're violent but they're family friendly still. Like they yeah. Have that little. Yeah, Ninjago, like specifically in the more recent seasons, I feel like Ninjago kind of goes back and forth with this. Sometimes they take the kit. Because obviously, guys, you'll notice that none of the ninja or any major character in Ninjago's ever been officially killed. And that's because they have to... Because Ninjago is Lego. Profit. It's Lego, and they have a... There's a rule for shows that are Lego, and, you know, even though... Even if adults watch it, it's still intended for kids. So they have rules where they can only go so far with that. With the child, with they still have to stay within child measures. Yeah, Garmadon, I feel like is the only major character who's actually died. He yeah, died, he died way back in like season six of four, on um, like the possession one. Yeah, and they did they did a great job of wrapping that up. Like season four yeah. and season five were the best two seasons to ever come out of Ninjago. I actually, season four and season five, I actually bought both the discs and have them in my room because those seasons were just so better when you compare them to others. I mean, I mean, it's not even necessary that they're dark seasons, but they just did a great job with the story. I mean, Moro, obviously a fan favorite villain. Chen, not necessarily, a, he is a fan favorite, but just the idea of stealing stealing the powers and using them yeah. to destroy Ninjago, I think is definitely a good storyline, and something that I'd like to see something similar to that come back in the future. But yeah, Ninjago, um, not to be like, um, criticized, I love the show, I've been watching it forever. Um, you kind of gotta step up your game with your villains, the villains haven't been that good recently. Yeah. Like, Cardon and Pythor and Chen, those three are my favorite, and Mor- Moro, those four are my favorite villains in the entire show. They've had the bet, they've had their, they've had their good share of with their time as a superhero, and then, like, their, well, their supervillain, and then kind of, like, their death thing, because Garmadon, he died, but he's back, and then Moro died, and then he came back for the day that departed, but then he came, he just died again, and then Pythor, we, ne- he fell off a cliff, and we never saw him again, so. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Unagami, the most recent villain for Ninjago, I think he was, he was, I mean, a lot of people really like him because he wasn't really a bad guy. People are just like, oh, he was just confused, and he didn't understand why his why his creator, because he's, he's not a human, he's a robot, he doesn't understand why his creator abandoned him, and it's because he was too dangerous to sell um, copies of him. So 
That's and so he was mad and was trying to destroy Ninjago and everything and trying to create a game to suck people into and everything. I feel like um he was a strong villain until we found out he wasn't a villain at all. He was just trying to ask figure out why he was um why he wasn't sold or whatever. He was yeah. that's just weak. I mean He's set, he's honestly he comes off as super evil, in, right until the final episode, which still was a great episode. But then he's like, I was just confused, and then that's it. And then he's all of a sudden on the good side. Sure. So guys, I hope you. Um, um, that's all we have for today. Um, I hope you guys um, are enjoying this. Like long, we're taking a longer approach of the uh, discussing discussions. Like last episode was almost twenty minutes long. This one um, is almost thirty minutes long. Oh wow! So, okay, um, yeah. Yeah, I hope you guys um enjoy this, and if you don't, if you like the shorter, like ten minute, super quick um episodes, um, put that down in the comments. Or if you like the longer ones, where we might eventually start doing live streams and stuff like that for discussing discussions. But if you like the longer ones or the shorter ones, comment that down below. Yep. But um, you guys have clearly been giving um discussing discussions a good um like view like it's got good views it's got good ratings and yeah so we'll see where this leads yeah i'm hoping that we will be able to continue this through and this be can become one of the main driving points of this channel as obviously guys some this channel sometimes gonna have to be taken off it so i can start to get this new channel done so there might be a point guys where the only videos getting uploaded are these but i think you guys <laughs> like them and as long as you guys are liking them, we're going to keep doing them. So, yeah, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel so we can get that massive Fortnite reward so that you guys can play with us and be featured in the live stream. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye, everyone.